So in this video, I want to introduce the dispersion plot analysis tool of Anconc. So let's look at that now. Okay, so how do we use the Anconc plot tool? Well, here's the software, and if we double click the software, uh, if you double click that, it will start and look like this. As I've said before in the getting started video, uh, at the beginning, there isn't any data ready to analyze, so you'd need to load in your corpus. And I explained how to do that in the Getting Started video. So we go to File, we go to Open Corpus Manager, and here we choose the corpus that we want to use. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use a pre built corpus, which is the uh, learned subcorpus of the AMIO 6 1 million word general English corpus. So if I select that by double clicking on it and saying OK, then we have our 80 files, 161,000 uh, words, and then we can start analyzing this with the plot tool. So as I explained in a previous video, in a quick tool, we, we can see a word, a search word or a phrase, and the words around it. So this tool shows how the word is used in the corpus. But sometimes we might be interested in not looking at how it's used, but where it's used. So this is a question of dispersion. How, so where in the files is this search word or phrase appearing? And that's where the plot tool um, becomes useful. So if I click on the plot tool, and I'm going to search for this word we, which I've been using in other examples, uh, which uh, is a common uh, personal pronoun that might be used in academic writing. If I click Start now, then Anconc will find all the hits for we in the corpus, but show them, as you can see here, uh, based on a per file basis. So you can see here that uh, uh, we have on the, uh, in the results panel here, we've got the document ID of the file of the corpus, and then the name of the file, and then how many um, tokens are in that file, and how many times does this search word appear in that file. And there's also a measure of dispersion. So how widely spread is that word across the file? So um, as, as with the other tools, at the bottom here, we, we have some controllers that will allow us to refine the search we're making. So we can, we can search for words or word parts. We can also search for words in, with case sensitivity. Uh, at the moment, this is turned off. We can also search with regex, if you know about regex, regular expressions. And as we've seen before, we have a result set option. So we can see all the hits, or we can see a random set of 10 hits, or 50 hits, or 100 hits, and so on. For a, a plot display like this, it usually doesn't make much sense to have a random set, and seeing all the results is probably the most useful. We also have here a zoom option. Let me explain that. So if you look at the plot here, um, it's nicely uh, laid out, but sometimes we might want to zoom in to see some part of the plot in more detail, or maybe zoom out so that we can uh, see a, um, a more compact version of the display. So the plot zoom uh, function allows you to zoom in and out to see different parts of the plot. I'll talk about overlay in a moment. Uh, if you want to do, um, use a different statistic for the dispersion, then we can go to the settings of the tool to change that. So if I go to the tool settings and I click on plot, you can see some various options here. And um, in the middle here, we have the statistics option. Now, to work out the dispersion, um, the tool divides each individual file up into certain bins of words. And we can set that to be, say, 10 or 5. And then we can use a dispersion measure to work out the dispersion across the file. Now, the current setting here is range, but I can set it to, for example, Julian's D. Uh, and then apply that. And if I do that, and then do create the graph again, then of course the plot itself looks the same, but now the dispersion measure is slightly different. Now at the moment we're sorting by dispersion, 
So that means the most dispersed file, the, the file with we dispersed most evenly across the file is shown at the top. And if we scroll down, you can see that um, in files where it's less dispersed, um, they come further at the, down the list. So the, um, the file J76 has we, but it's the least well dispersed. You might notice, of course, that we have 80 files in the corpus, but only 62 are showing in this display. That's because some of the files don't have any hits at all. And if we go to the settings, we can change that and show every file, even when there are no hits. Okay, so uh, what else can we do? So of course we can search for phrases as well. So I might want to search for something like we have. Of course there are less hits of we have, but we can again see the dispersion across the corpus here. And an interesting feature of Anconc is to be able to overlay other searches on top of an initial search. So for example, uh, uh, we have is used here 37 times in, across 22 files. Uh, uh, but we might want to see what about we are as another expression. How is that dispersed? But if we want to compare the two, well, I'll just show you that first. And there's the we are results. But maybe we'll want to see them at the same time. So first, here's the we have results. And then I can click the overlay option and then choose a different color here, say red. And now I can search for the we are phrase and it will show the, the results on top of the we have results. So here they are. Might be a little difficult to see in the video, but I hope you can see here that we have is um, in blue and we are is in red. And by plotting overlays like this, we can start to see common patterns and which patterns appear with other patterns and so on. And it's quite a useful feature. If you look at the results right now, you may notice that the plot is uh, an even length for all the files. But we also know that the files themselves are actually not all the same size. They're quite similar in length, but a little different. So this, this plot is normalizing the length, uh, but if you are interested in seeing the actual length of the file and where the plots fit in there, we can then do that by changing the settings. So if I go to the tool settings again and go to plot, you can see here one of the display options is to normalize the plots. So if I turn that feature off and then apply and then do another hit, uh, another search, to say we have. This is now the result that we get. And you'll notice that uh, here the lengths are slightly different now. Uh, I hope you can see that. So this is a way to see exactly how long each file is and where the plots fit in there. And in some corpora, the files are very different lengths. So this is sometimes a very important thing to check. Okay. And let's talk now about how to save the results in this display. Like with other tools, one of the easiest ways to save the results is to simply select the rows in the table as we might do in other tools. Okay, so we can use shift click or control click, and then we can copy those results by using the edit option and copy, or we can use a shortcut like control C, and then we can go again to uh, something like Word, and, and paste those results in. So here's a table in uh, Word. And perhaps for, um, for this kind of table, Excel would be better. So we can paste the same information into Excel and it would look like this. So you can see that the information is saved. You might notice some gaps between the rows and that is because in the original data, we also had some gaps in the rows. Now, if we select everything here and copy that and paste that into Excel, just a second. For example here, now you can see that um, all the rows are populated and we have the information we want. 
But one thing is missing, of course, and that's the plot itself. Now, uh, in, in future versions of Hong Kong, this will be saved as well. But at the moment, if you want to save the plot, the best way to do that is to change the view to a graphic view of the same information and then save that. I'll show you how to do that now. So if we go to settings and go to the tool settings again and plot, uh, there's an alternative view of the data called graphic view. And let me show you what this looks like. The graphic view is the same in the sense that it shows all the plots. Um, let me make that larger so you can see exactly what's there now. Maybe even bigger. So here is a graphic view of the information. And you can see that we have the plots again across the corpus. You'll also notice that these are relatively plotted. So we have these long, um, these long plots. But again, if we go to settings and change that to no a normalized plot like this, then they're going to be plotted in a, in a little bit more of an easy to see way. Now, um, so like this. This view is very uh, fast to generate. So if you have a large corpus with lots of results, then this view can be the most effective. Uh, and it also allows you to save the results as a picture or as a ping file. So if I come here and I go to save the current tab results, then I get an option to save the results as a ping file, which can be um, very nice for embedding into other results and other files. So if I save the results now, so I'm going to call these uh, plot results. So if I save that, and now I go back, let me get rid of that. If I go back to the folder, and you can see here the plot results, then we get a result that looks like this. Let me just zoom in to show you what it looks like. So this is a ping file with all the information um, from the plot tool which can be nicely now embedded into another program, uh, depending on what you want to do. So that's how to uh, analyze the dispersion of your corpus data and how to then save the results for further analysis. So that's the basic way to use the dispersion plot tool of Anconc. So try it out. Mm -hmm.